and we are the only people here. Este es Acapulco ahora. Ni un turista. Are you aware that there's been a shooting here on the beach? No. Shooting? No. Yeah, just right there. Hemos liquidado como unas 6, 7 personas, pero pura persona de delincuente. En la vida civil soy un, una gran persona. I thought we would start there today. Acapulco used to be a really great place to visit. I mean, it's the beauty in a lot of places in Mexico is stunning. But now the violence has spilled over into areas that have, I guess, historically been popular with American tourists. And now we're seeing warnings come out of our State Department saying don't go there and government employees being banned from traveling there. Now you have to ask yourself a question. Why has it gotten so much worse in the last year? I mean, we've always heard about this stuff on the fringe in different areas in Central and South America and Mexico. But why all of a sudden now are these American tourist areas becoming so dangerous? Why are they telling Americans don't go to Mexico? Why are Americans being targeted? Why are these cartels doing this? See, the only thing keeping these cartels in business is the American demand for their product. Period. If they didn't have people willing to pay any price for what they're bringing from South America, they wouldn't do it. Why would they risk it? Why would they risk being killed themselves? Because there's demand. And the demand is here. The money is here. So why would they be targeting businesses with extortion wanting that American money? Well, I'll tell you why. The Mexican cartels are having a financial problem right now. And they are extorting more people. Why are they having a financial problem? Well, the people in this region, down here, are enjoying a coup for their business because nobody is paying attention. See, there's a difference between the Mexicans, the Jalisco cartel and the Sinaloans, and the South American cartels that ship through the Gulf. They're pretty much being ignored, and the commander of the 4th Fleet has pretty much said that in so many words. He only has 25% of the ships he needs to deal with what he knows is coming. So these people, their operating costs are much lower than the ones in Mexico. That's why the violence is so bad over there and not so much reported over here because they've got a free un uninterrupted run into Florida and parts of South Carolina and all the Gulf states. Because everybody thinks the big problem is going to come over here. And just like the Admiral said, it's like squeezing a balloon. And here's where the money is going to be. See, this violence is related to extortion. These businesses that operate on American tourist dollars, these 
cartels come and say, okay, you're going to throw us 20, 25, 30% of your business for protection. And if you don't, we're going to kill you or murder you. If their drug business was driving enough revenue for them to where they didn't need to take the risk of doing that, they wouldn't bother. They would more than likely just target businesses that would help accentuate their business, not just any random business. And they wouldn't be killing police officers and police commandants and their eight-month-old nephews, which they've done. Now, the reason I brought that up is because it dovetails with the Pompeo news. Mike Pompeo taking over as um, Secretary of State for Mr. Tillerson, to my mind, isn't nearly as important as who's taking his spot at the CIA. Gina Haspel. Now, I know that a lot of you are going to be shocked, but this is actually a decision that I completely agree with the current administrator with. Absolutely, probably the best decision he's made. And why? Because this girl, woman, pardon me, is one after my own heart. As a former interrogator myself, this woman knows how to get the job done. And I just want to read something for you. Ran a black site CIA prison in Thailand, codenamed Cat's Eye. Abu Zubaydah was there. And here's the best part. Waterboarded 83 times in a month. Sleep deprived, kept in a large box. Head slammed against a wall and lost his left eye. If we are going to win this war, if we are going to take back our country, if we're going to be restored to a level of respect, we're going to have to take the gloves off. These people down in South America are no joke. They are mean, nasty, dirty people that will do anything. And the reason I showed that clip is they got no problem picking up weapons and going out in the street and doing their own policing. Now, last I checked, the Mexicans didn't have the Second Amendment, yet I didn't see any lack of hardware down there. Same thing in Venezuela and Colombia. No Second Amendment, no right to have a gun, yet guns everywhere. And real deal ones. They don't walk around with 38s. They walk around with military grade hardware all over the place. So this woman is going to know how to deal with that. Deal with people that have been trained since they were kids to kill. I remember one of the hardest things as an interrogator to deal with was the kids. You could put a toothbrush and toothpaste on one side of the table and you could put a Kalashnikov on the other side. 12 year old, 11, 12 year old kid could pick up the Kalashnikov, take it apart, put it back together again, load it, blow your head off. The toothbrush and toothpaste, they'd probably eat the toothpaste and probably sell the toothbrush. But I have no idea what it was for. Just to give you an example of what you're dealing with. We're not talking 12,000 miles away around the other side of the world. We're talking a boat right away, right across the border. And they have generational war fighters down there. It's, uh, it's going to take something like this to fix the problem. I wish she was, uh, well, maybe she will be able to influence military intelligence gathering. And be able to get us back to where we need to be so that people are scared of us again. Because clearly they're not anymore. We don't intimidate anybody anymore. And that should be the case. I mean, speak softly, carry a big stick. I think that was Teddy Roosevelt. It's going to be a necessity to do this. It's not going to be fun. But 
it's going to be something we have to do. This article says that the bombing was unrelated to the fairies, but this is just the attempt by the media to downplay all of this. In this other article, if I can get back to it, it talks about how the media is hiding this. British journalist, um, I'm not even going to try that name, traveled to Mexico to try to figure out why this is going on. But here's what he found. Lack of police presence. Tourists unaware. The police don't want anyone to know. Minimum fuss. Kept hush-hush. Politicians put press under pressure to not report it. So that they don't scare away tourists. They scare away tourists. The money doesn't come in. The business owners don't have the money to pay the extortion. And it just a vicious cycle and it all has to do with the lack of attention being paid to South America and their cartels and what's going on down there it's largely being ignored I might be the only person talking about it but the US military is putting people in Panama I covered this yesterday and the last thing we'll cover is a little piece of channel business now to my regular contributors, I would like to say thank you for putting up with yesterday. What I mean by that is every so often I have to throw a bone out to the trolls to get them to come out of cover. I get a large amount of subscribers that don't have, they have their settings so that I can't actually go to my list of subscribers and see them but they wait until I drop a video and then without even watching it they go report it as uh, violating community standards and of course YouTube automatically demonetizes it until I go in and change a thumbnail or change a word or two and then you know after a thousand views they then re-monetize it but this group of people cannot help themselves if I throw out something patently false they will come out of cover to say, ha ha, you're dumb, you're stupid, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. With the date thing yesterday that I let off with, I had to pull these guys out of cover, and I did. And I was able to actually block and delete close to 60 of them that had been doing this. So as you can see, everything was fine. They usually wait two or three days when they think I'm not paying attention, and then they'll do this. They'll go in and just randomly attack the videos. So, thank you for tolerating that. These guys will, uh, it's the funniest thing to watch. I could make a video saying that the sky is blue and the grass is green. And they would immediately come out and say, no, clearly, Maki, you're wrong. The sky is a bright indigo and the grass is a verdant light emerald. So... Clearly, you are a Clinton Podesta operative, and I'm going to unsubscribe. That's pretty much how they operate. So, anyway, um, that's just channel business. And as far as the uh, comments getting held for review or things spam, if you make a comment that says, Whoa, wow, check out this. This is great. And then just leave a link. Yeah, you're going to get deleted. Or, wow, you know, everyone should go take a look at this and then leave a link you're going to get deleted. If you explain your link and say, here is a link that says, you know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and this is why it's related to the current video, you won't get deleted. If you just drop a link by itself, you're going to get deleted. So treat each other with respect, treat each other with dignity, have an honest, decent conversation, everybody will get along. So I tried to make the channel something where thoughtful people can come and have an intelligent conversation and not have it devolve into name calling. So, anyway, at that point, I will let you guys go. Gina Haspel, good decision by the administrator. Mike Pompeo, we'll wait and see. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.